Now, if the virus is too resilient or becoming too resilient, I think we also need to become too resilient. Virus is be trying to become resilient only at the level of body, physicality, biology. But we are much more than body, physicality, biology. We need to, we need to become resilient at a much deeper level. Having said that, having, having said about the connection or this deep integration between science and spirituality, which is probably much more needed today, because only at the level of science we might not be able to solve this problem. We need to look at the angle or the vastness of spirituality now to build deep resilience to be able to wade through. Yeah. Padmakar ji, Asha ji, I want to, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah. This time, Asha ji, would you go first? Yeah. Thank okay. you. Uh, the first thought uh, which comes to mind is where it all started, you know, this entire so called scientific method which the West has embraced. And that was Rene Descartes, who uh, argued that the world was like a machine and that its pieces like clockwork mechanisms and that the machine could be understood by taking apart its pieces, studying them, then putting them back together. Mm. The point is that both cannot be done at the same time, having the holistic perspective as well as the micro, uh, you know, perspective. But the point, the, the aspect is that both of them are two ways of looking at the world. Science has taken one path and it has helped in one way. In many domains of knowledge, for example, science has helped. Uh, the entire uh, development of uh, medicine, for example, and uh, certain kinds of uh, you know, treatments has all been because of this capacity to uh, decode by breaking down into bits and uh, so-called atomization mm. is the process there which has helped but now comes the point why does it matter to us as human beings our training is dominantly scientific in approach if we are engineers trained as engineers if we are trained in the sciences so there is an overdevelopment of one side of our brain, that is the logical side of our brain, or the so-called uh, left brain, and uh, inadequate focus or inadequate development of the right side of the brain, which controls emotions and which controls spirituality. So the very fact that both left and right, both logic and emotion exist within each one of us means that each one of us has the capacity for both. And yet, each one of us focuses dominantly on one or the other. So the spiritualist is in the Himalayas and uh, the left brain guy is busy in the material world. Whereas, we need both. Thank you, Anishita. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. Huh? So when you say the spiritualist is in the Himalayas, I, I hope you're not referring to me here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, because I'm also very scientific in my approach. You see, I look at the world as a pramana, proof. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, Padmakarji, your views on this, please. Uh, actually, if you look at ourselves, I mean, the way we are in our country, I, I think uh, somewhere over a period of time, it was considered as not passe that... Uh, you need to believe in spirituality and then which is generally poured into a lot of religious practices. So at a point in time, everyone felt that they were not making any sense without looking at the deeper meaning uh, because everything cannot be explained for everyone and some of these tend to be very mysterious and not meant to be given to those who don't understand. So these are codified into some religious practices and then put there, uh, to which probably even today in the villages, etc., it goes on. Now, but I think it is the more educated, if I can call it, uh, the more educated you are, the more complicated you seem to become and more truncated. Uh, because even in my company or many other places, when I've dealt with the labor 
employees who are least educated, I find that they have no problem in encompassing everything. They are able to move from spiritual to materialistic to rational to traditional and sentimental. Many things they are able to encompass and they are at peace and they are confident. Uh, but I think the higher we got educated, so-called Western education, which has taken us, you seem to be looking at the way the scientists dissected or cut into several pieces. Our education system has also done it to us. If I have studied physics, it doesn't seem to have any connection with chemistry. It, you know, it took me much, much longer time as an adult for me to understand all these are integrated. These are integral sciences of life, of nature, which for us to understand, they have unified, the, or not unified, they have broken it up into simple, understandable pieces. I think that is where the problem of the scientific approach lies. We are looking at things unitarily without looking at things together. And beyond that, there is a sigma effect. And what we are able to understand is the outside in through all your sensory mechanisms, but you are not able to figure out what is inside out, or what is it I need to do, once again in terms of restoring the balance part of it. I think this is where the whole dichotomy lies, even in terms of the way we run organizations today or institutions today. We need to take things out of people for what I'm giving you in terms of pecuniary resources and so on. But some way the softer elements, like the way Asha ji has explained, that I tend to be left-brained and then it is a weakness for me to speak about the other sides of me, the softer sides of me. So therefore I tend to deal with you in a certain way, uh, which is also the sociological coding of what masculine is all about, which is strong, I am a Hercules. I'm an atlas, I'm carrying the whole weight of the world and I'm brave and I can do it. But somewhere, imbalance creeps in because the moment you're not, because ultimately we are like, uh, we have to oscillate among three things, uh, the axis of thought, feeling and action continuously. Every thought of mine has to be checked with my feeling and then every feeling has to be prostrate. Am I being unnecessarily mushy? All right, what is it I do next? I mean, that is where I see the connection between the heart as well as the head. And if I don't do this continuous interconnections between these two, uh, which is what to me spiritualism is all about in terms of not being excessively thought concentrated, but also cross-check, not just feeling again, the feeling for what? And why am I feeling so? And then can I go to the back of it, the root of it? which is once again a scientific temperament of a different kind on the outside mm -hmm. uh, But I think where we are completely lost in the whole process somewhere is trying to divide things into different pieces and trying to find a solution which unfortunately is not likely to come unless we put in several elements by dredging from inside issues like hope, resurgence, will. Um, somewhere I was reading, watching the video sent by someone how bodies create antibodies. It's not just by this, but also the very pleasant uh, episodes as well as issues like love and affection and also experiencing human company, which means well for you. Several of these things also create antibodies in the system. Okay. Now, if this is what that is, why is it we are not looking at all things? Uh, so I think this current situation therefore has created many, many issues in terms of uh, being as social right now and in terms of being kept aside, being isolated, saving myself from the disease, but that also seems to be not giving me the human companionship, uh, which is the sanmarga which I need to follow through satsang of a certain kind. I think all those kind of things are not happening, and which is once again coming from the world of spirituality in a certain way. 
beautifully expressed beautifully ex- expressed padmakar ji i mean this is you've actually nailed it you know this is what is really needed because when we talk about resilience it can't just happen through from the mental space we need to explore another space of our being which we are overlooking and this current situation pandemic you know apart from all the all the suffering it has brought on us as collective humanity it is also waking us up i mean that's the reason we are having this to me it's a very important dialogue it it has woken us up to now take this dialogue in the middle of the corporate in the middle of the business world and see that you know business is also not separate from life business is an ansh a part of life and the rules which are which are good for life are the rules which must be good for the business also it's like the the business world is a subset of life we can't have two separate set of rules here and i think that's where we've been kind of going wrong and maybe the situation is trying to wake us up that's the reason i look at it as a as a time of great transition yeah let's look at virus you know the science is saying the virus is extremely resilient it's mutating and and the rest of it we are of course much uh much bigger than a than a virus not just in terms of size but the consciousness in the virus is little less than the consciousness in a human being that's the reason we've put human being as the top of the manifested world yeah the the top of the life that it could achieve yeah now if the virus is too resilient or becoming too resilient i think we also need to become too resilient virus is be trying to become resilient only at the level of body physicality biology but we are much more than body physicality biology we need to we need to become resilient at a much deeper level it happens at two level in my experience you know one is i would call the outward resilience which i think we've achieved very well the almost overnight the the business world the companies moved to work, work from home and you know establishment in technology so that the operations do not suffer i think we achieved that the outward resilience to a great degree we achieved that we're talking in the business context or in a in a industry context right now we're not talking about you know let's say the context of migrant labor right now yeah so in that context we've achieved resilience but resilience is another element to it it's the long termness you know i play with the camera i love the whole process of film making also i i guide uh, a bunch of people on creating good cinema etc camera is a very interesting thing you know it 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 has a you change the lens and you can go microscopic you change the lens and you can have a vast panoramic view zoom in zoom out what the camera does our human eye does much more quickly you know in a single split second we can zoom in zoom out zoom in zoom out now if the nature has given us this capability to the eye there must be this capability in the whole system which means we have the capacity to view a situation in a microscopic view and to deal with it quickly the immediate crisis and at the same level be able to see the macro view in my experience this can be done simultaneously and this must be done simultaneously otherwise what happens most of the people live their life managing or dealing from one crisis to another crisis in between there are periods of forgetfulness let me repeat again in my experience after meeting thousands of people of all strata of society or from different backgrounds i have viewed people have become very habitual of living their lives in three zones largely to handle an immediate crisis once it's over you forget about it then you move on because another crisis comes in front of you so crisis crisis in between periods of forgetfulness it happens largely because we are too microscopic all the time and it strains our system when you are too microscopic it strains the system we need to develop the capacity to alter the macro view at the same time yeah and for a leader it is absolutely must to be able to marry the both and i'm saying at the same time while i'm dealing with the micro i am absolutely aware of the macro yeah now 
Now, if that's if that's what it is, then we need to look at resilience from a different angle. Then. Mm-hmm.